This is the Push Ship Podcast, a raw look at the hospitality industry. Welcome to another Post Shift podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Sean Sewell. This week, I sit down with the first lady of Canadian whiskey, the grand dame, if you will, of uh, Canadian club, uh, Tish Harker. She's been with Canadian club for 32 years, which is just an immense uh, milestone, I think, for anybody in any industry. And she's been with Canadian club through the good times, the bad times, and everything else between. Um, She's an absolute delight of a human being to sit down with. And we had a good long chat just about her sort of push and her personal drive behind the oldest whiskeys that have been released this year. So the, the last couple of years, the 40, the 41, the 42, the 43. Um, when you're a distillery as old as Canadian Club, you have a huge amount of stock that you have access to. So I really hope you enjoy this episode, guys. Thank you very much for the support. I'll chat to you soon. Bye. So yeah, like I like to sit down with people and sort of get to know everybody outside the professional thing because I think everybody has this sort of um, faux reality, mm-hmm. I suppose, with everybody because mm-hmm. it's always social media is such a massive thing. Yes. Okay, so everybody sees this gleany, nice sort of social yes. media thing. Yes. And you're literally the first lady of Canadian whiskey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've said so many times yesterday, they said, um, what do we call you, the lady of whiskey? I said, you know what, at my age, and it was the whiskey lassie yeah. that started this. She calls me the Grand Dame. Yeah. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Um, the Grand Dame yeah. of Canadian whiskey. And I went, okay, I'll take it. I'm of the age now. I can take that. How long have you been with Canadian Club? Uh, I'm in my 32nd year. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I've been around a long time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so what's your, t- what's your title? What's your official title? Global brand ambassador. Well, I'm still manager of yeah. the building. Uh, manager and global brand ambassador for CC. So do you travel around the world a lot for CC? It's taken me uh, three years ago. I went over to France. Um, we did a... Um, uh, a, a meeting. Uh, it was it was a global marketing meeting, and uh, uh, at the Cavassier Estate okay, yeah. in Jarnac, and then yeah, I spent some time. Estate, going, oh, my oh my god! It's taken me to New Zealand. It's taken me to Australia. So yeah, it's taken me Scotland. It's taken me around the world almost. Wow! Mostly North America. Mostly North America. Uh, these last few years, last five years, have been mostly Canada, but now the U.S. There's a lot of U.S. reporters here this yeah. week. And uh, I was in New York uh, at the end of October uh, to, because they wanted to know more about the Chronicles, CC Chronicles, the 40, 41, and 42. And so I did t- tasting. I did two and a half days of media. So it was everybody. It was Forbes. It was GQ. It was all these big um, whiskey advocate and all that. And uh, you know what? They just went wild for it. And it was the, I did 12 of them, and about five of them said the next big thing is Canadian rye whiskey because they've done everything over there. So they need, you know, like this industry does this. <laughs> and right now we're 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 uh, we're not on the top, but we're close to it. So I, I find like uh, <laughs> geeks like I said, I got to sit down with Doctor Don today. We, we especially with the social media bubble, like yeah. you, we all think that we're changing the world and like for cocktails and stuff like that. But then you really look at what sells. Yeah, and you're you're privy to this. Like the classic CC is still outselling the everything else that you guys believe do a yeah. substantial amount. Yep. So I think we get always get caught up in this bubble, but it's always I a bit of massive for Canadian whiskey for, for yes. a long time like I my yeah I've been a long proponent for Canadian whiskey because I've always liked it even though it, I've sat at bars in Vancouver they don't have any Canadian whiskey on their back bar and I'm yeah. like but why not and they're like oh Canadian whiskey's rubbish I'm like but you're carrying whistle peel and you have Masterson's on the back bar you, you don't even know that's from Canada right no it's not like <laughs> you're an idiot <laughs> you, I wish you, I could say that to them you, you scream the virtues of Masterson's and whistle pig, <laughs> and whistle pig. But, exactly. Uh, you guys waiting for a couple more? Did you want to order food? You want to have lunch? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do we, do we, are we going to be able to squeeze this in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, um. Okay, okay. Um, I don't this even know. This is how like fluffing my uh, podcast is. I won't even edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to have them. Okay, Tish, make a decision here. Um, I had a, like a really good master class last night. Some of those American guys were there. And one guy came in with this, I call it the little Frenchman or the Englishman's cap. He sat down and I'm looking at, he was right in front and I thought, I, I, I must have met this guy somewhere. This one of the guys I interviewed in, his, I, I, he grew like one of those, you know, like those closed shaped yeah, beards yeah. and he had this cap on. And he took the cap off and I went, I know you. <laughs> and he was one of the guys from New York. Oh, wow. And because I was talking about this show and he came up, him and his uh, girlfriend, wife, whoever, they came up and they were 
were all over the, because uh, he was all, all over the 41, and uh, he said, what's your favorite? And I said, okay, don't tell anybody, but I like the 42. Out of the three of them, I like the 42. And so he said last night, he goes, can I change my mind? And I said, uh, just tell me that you love something Canadian club. And he goes, okay, I think I like the 42. I went, okay, good good job. <laughs> There's some of the oldest whiskeys that have been put out. Yeah. Because yeah, it is the oldest whiskey put out by a Canadian distillery. We, uh, yeah, so with the 40 year, two years, so, well, now three years ago, 2017, um, we did that just to kind of, I had a, I had a full Test tooth and nail, you know, because they weren't, they didn't want to do anything with it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into it. You know what? Let me, I'm just going to kind of make up my own. Uh, oh, there we go. No, that's uh, fish and chips. That's what I'll have. That's what I'll have. Um, well, cheers, hon. I know you're not drinking, but. <laughs> Was like it, you, you, how, how long has Canadian Club been on the, like, how old is the distillery? And well, um, CC Premium yep. this year celebrates 162 years. Wow. Yeah, it's been around a long time. Distillery, uh, again, 162 yeah. years. And, um... You know the changes that's going on at the distillery are just so shouldn't shouldn't have, shouldn't have never happened. Uh, that's you know we've been living with that for 14 years, yeah. but it is what it is. Um, and uh, as much as they try and kill the brand um, and paying people off, uh, they can't do it because uh, you know people people. This I I get on social media. Um, there's a like you know on Instagram. There's a Canadian club, and uh, it's just for Canadian club whiskey lovers around the world. And so they send me all. Well, they post it, and then they'll, they might mention me once, once in a while. They don't know who I am. I've never met them. But there's countries I've never even heard of and, and where they're selling CC from. And, you know, that's it's just so big. So, um, you know, it's going to be a heck of a law. It's going to be, uh, you and I will be gone before anybody can catch up to the uh, distri distribution of CC around the world. So, how, look, with the 40, 40 41, 42. Yeah. Um, being the oldest Canadian whiskey's ever released. Yeah. Do you have stuff that's older at the distillery? We do, and that's going to be the 43 this year. Wow. The 44 next year, the 45 after that, and then we're going to stop and hold off to 50. Wow. Yeah, and nobody can catch us. So. Have, have you got, like, what's, what, if you want to be privy to it, like, what's the oldest barrels that you do have in the distillery? Right now, they're the 43. Okay. They'll, be, they'll be 43 in August, 43 years old in August, and October. So they were laid down August, October 1977. Wow. Yeah. And was that intentional to do this, or was it just sort of laid down and laid like, oh, we'll probably plan that in around about the 12 year old, 15 year old? Um, great question. It was intentional. Um, um, unfortunately, soon after he laid them down, our master blender, uh, he died, massive heart attack, he died. Oh. He was a younger man. And, um, hi, hi. Yes, can I get um, a, a fish and chips? Just Can I just get one piece? Yep. And um, instead of fries, can I get uh, a coleslaw or something? And it comes with a little bit of coleslaw, but you want extra coleslaw? You know what? A little bit of fries, the coleslaw, and one piece. Okay. Thank you. How's it for you? I'm good. I'm going to probably have lunch in a little bit. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, so he um, he didn't have a chance. He didn't leave a log. Everything was just... And so um, they um, concentrated on... They knew... See, this was... Um, back about 10 years before that, he had bought a just short of 250,000 once used white American barrels. Oh, wow. Like we always do. Yeah. We don't usually buy that many at a time. But um, as they come to us up in Canada, uh, there's a there's a little company just outside the city that will aggressively char, number four char, burn off all the bourbon. And then it's kind of like a brand new barrel when we get it. Uh, because it's only been used once, uh, and we've got all the fresh wood sugars and vanillas and tannins and everything. So that's brand new to us. And then that's when we blend the distillates and put it in the barrel. Well, he didn't do that. He just put corn distillate in it. So the rye, it was filled with rye when he first got them in 1967 after char uh, burning off the bourbon. He filled them with rye because we needed rye and rye malt. That's part of our CC Premium Nashville. And uh, in two, tw 1977, he dumped the rye because we needed it for CC Premium. And then he just, and we don't know why. We don't know why he only put corn to slit in there. And, um, well, corn is part of CC as well. But why did he go through the extra step of putting the rye in there first? So he was doing some innovation. 
we didn't know what it was. <laughs> we don't know. And that's a, that's a sad story. It's the truth, but it's kind of sad that. <laughs> so the company at the warehouses, you know, we've got we've got over a million barrels out there. Just kept, you know, regaging the barrels as you can within the bond. So say, let's for example, they take you know if it was barrel 100 for August. They'd take 100 and tap up 96, 97, 98. So the whole thing is, you know, as long as you keep the barrel full, yeah. you'll have less evaporation. So, you know, it's very expensive to make whiskey. It's 3% per year, yeah. angel share, all that jazz. So this is what's happened. And then, you know, in 1980, uh, 87, we were bought by the British conglomerate. But again, this stuff yeah. is just sleeping. It's aging. It's just being well looked after. And, uh, uh, and then in 2005, we're bought by Bean. So in 2016, I'm at the global marketing meeting in Australia. We're going through the inventory of CC, and we get down to this, at that time was 30, uh, 30, 38, 39 year old. And they went to flip the page and I said, look, we, they were going to do something with it at 35, and then they, they, they didn't know. So they just said, okay, let's just keep aging it. I think they were, I think they were a little nervous. Only one guy said to me, we didn't know if it was good or not, you know, because it gets too woody after yeah. a while. But I knew heated warehouses being very well yeah. taken care of. And I said, okay. They said, well, what's your idea? And I said, well, why don't we, you know, do something for Canada's 150th? We are the oldest, the largest Canadian whiskey in the world. Um, and they said, okay, well, let's, let's taste it first. So I came back from Australia. That was in October. And I waited until January. I went out. So it was turning uh, 40 a few months after that, but just to taste it. Freezing cold day, pop the bung, put the whiskey thief in, tried it, and I said, oh my God, you guys, this is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So I like, sent the samples up to the big guys in Toronto. They said, oh my God, we, we had no idea. So they, they really kind of let me run with it, and they said, we're going to do a small run, which we did. We only did 7,000 bottles for Canada only. And they said, um, what do you want to do? And I said, nothing. Bring it down to consumable strength. No caramel coloring the way we can. Said to keep it as pure, as pure as possible. So that's the only thing we did. We brought it down to 45 ABV, bottled it, and that was it. Wow. Yeah. So you've been with a Canadian club for two, uh, 32 years. Yes. Um, what did you do? Have you, you always been in the industry? Uh, well, for 32 years. No, before that, I worked at the university. Uh, I was okay. working for a law professor. And uh, I thought, you know, I think I want to go, go that way. And, and then when you're young enough, you can change your yes. career path, right? <laughs> and I said, and I was driving past this beautiful, beautiful palace, which was the main office building, which I now, now I manage that. And I said, I want to work in there one day. And so, sure enough, I stopped in one day and I said, I drive past here every day on my way to work at the university. And uh, uh, here's my resume. And they called. They called a few days later. Wow. Now, I started off uh, in office services, you know, kind of filling in here and there. Then I was working with the salespeople in fleet operations. That was a lot of fun. And they wanted to put me in sales. And I said, no, no, no. So I kind of steered towards marketing. And then 20 years ago, 21 years ago soon, they handed me uh, the keys to this building and said, you know, uh, they, all the executives moved out because the, the building is a 16th century uh, palace, a copy of a palace in Florence, Italy. And it would open at 8.30 to let this, the executives and their staff in, and then it would close at 4.30 when they went home. Nobody got to see this building. So the president, the new president, came to Walkerville and he said, okay, uh, well, I'm going to move all the execs out, and myself and the, my partner, he's since retired, uh, we turned it into the brand center. So people from around the world, because it's a global brand, would come, do the tour, the rich history, the production, and we'd finish with a tasting. And, um, and then the company decided a couple of years ago that they were going to restructure a little bit, do something a little different. And so currently it's closed right now. I'm the only one in there, me and, me and the ghosts, the entities. And, um, and so, yeah, but it's, it's the hope is that, you know, something's going to happen soon so that we can open the doors and let the people come back and learn the story of Canadian Club. Because the, the demand is there. They want to come. But, um, you know, I'm just waiting patiently to see. In the meantime, I'm on the road um, doing these shows and interviews and tastings and sharing the... Uh, when did you take, what, what year did you take over the role as, like, the brand ambassador? When did I get it? Yeah. Uh, it started about 15 years ago. Six, 15, 16. Shortly after we opened the building, I had my my staff was 
you know, I was I was running budgets, but they were doing the tours. So, because uh, like even then, like you would have been one of the very first brand ambassadors of any kind. Uh, yeah, and we then were also a lady. That's right. And then also for a pretty at the time pretty random category of spirits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How, how, how have you seen? Thank you, my dear. You're very welcome. Thank you. Have you seen? You need a comment? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. How have you seen the change? Have you seen? Oh it? yes, yeah, yeah. Because you've really been at the ground floor, like yes, like, yes. Uh, it's um, I, I I I say this in the kindest way possible. Um, the women, uh, and I remember shortly after when I would go do a presentation, just like last night. Yeah. Half the room is women, but they said, "Well, if she can enjoy and love this whiskey and talk about it with passion, then maybe maybe we, we can." I've never drank whiskey in my life. A lot, so many women will say that to me. That was probably one of the biggest. Um, it, it, when you talk about your like career goals and stuff, I'm so happy with that because I started doing this, but it wasn't labeled women and whiskey yet. I was doing CC dinners and it, for women, and uh, now women and whiskey is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I've seen it change. Um, and the thing is, with the brand ambassador roles, like I like to say to everybody, you mold it to what um, there's no there's like one line description of what a brand ambassador is. But you take it and you you mold it to what you want it to be. So you either you can get up there, sound like a broken record, or you you know you get you get passionate about it, about your brand, and um, that to me is the key thing. There's there's great brand ambassadors out there, uh, and then there isn't. There's some that you know, and you can tell they're not they're not enjoying it, or they're you know they're not made to do that. And they're on their sixth brand. Yeah, <laughs> and they just kind of go on like a broken record type of thing. And but it's like you know what, I wish you could, like. There obviously there's people that want to be behind the scenes and there's people that want to be out there on the stage talking about it. So, um, but yeah, I've seen I've seen I've seen it come this brand ambassadorship. I've seen it really come to light. I think it's uh, it's great for these brands because you have like this is like the um, you're putting your your brand on stage every time you go out there and make a presentation of whether it be 50 people or 150 people. You're talking about your brand and you're there, so many people said to me last night especially the American people said I didn't know so much about this brand yeah, everybody knows it's the oldest Canadian but you know nobody really knows a lot of the stuff that I um, presented to them last night so that's always really good how do you think the categories changed since you sort of took well a Canadian whiskey has uh, we took a dip there in the 80s I remember I started in mid 80s and uh, uh, what I was told was you know and, and of course in Windsor I mean I'm not originally from Windsor but lived there long enough to say it's home now, but um, a Canadian club is, that's that's it for Windsor, right? But then I started seeing what was going on in the rest of the world. Single malt scotches came to North America, flavored vodkas, and we were not on top anymore. We were on top forever, and then we weren't. And uh, so I remember the master blender saying he had just launched Classic 12 in 1984, and they said to me, you know, where, where do you want to go? So I was doing fleet, uh, liking it, but they said, we want you to do sales, and I said, no. They said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to know how, how this product is made. So they let me spend some time with the master blender. That's how I learned how. I still do my tastings based on what he taught me. I know some people, you know, they do it a little differently, but I do it the way I was taught. And um, and secondly, you know, he, he um, I was with him when he, you know, 1992, he launched... Um, the, uh, well, 1989 came the Whiskey Guild. Uh, he did that first. Nobody was prepared to pay $39.99 for a bottle of whiskey. Uh, but in 1992, he did uh, CC Sherry Cask. Mm-hmm. And I love that one. Awful. Oh, my God. And so sorry that they stopped it and they couldn't get the... the, the I got goodness. some in Singapore. Did you? Yeah, I had it on the back bar of Singapore. Oh, my God. Was, I hadn't tasted that for a long time. I found some... Um, when we go out to the Fredericton Festival, yeah. I found yeah. Frank, Frank Scott's got them. Just yeah, he's got a bottle there. Archaeology and... Yeah. Yeah. So they find that random bottle but a lot of people think that had a female skew, and I went, really? Um, I didn't get that because that was a super, super premium yeah. for us, you know. Eight year old CC premium finished in a, um, a, a cast that we got from Perez, Spain, and um, it bumped it up 41.3 ABV, so it was a beautiful. And I saw that and I got really excited by that. And at the same time, he released the 10 year old CC Reserve, mm-hmm. more rye, and I saw everybody get excited by that. And I thought, well, okay, this is what people want. They're powerful. It's asking for nothing that's going to, you know, blow the back of your head off like the big, huge, yeah, yeah. smoky, peaty scotches or the big, big bourbons. But CC's always, you cannot kill this brand because 
um, and, and this is a word that I don't like, but people have called it, it's so versatile, um, it'll never go away, it'll never go away. And I said, well, that's a good thing, and they go, absolutely, that's a good thing, but, you know, just, so now we're looking out of the box, yeah. looking out of the box when, um, uh, when they started talking about the, the Canadian rye, and, you know, a couple of them right out of the chute, 95, 96%. We went, because our sister plant is ADL, and we said, we can do that, because rye, that's the only plant in Canada that can make 100% yeah. rye, because it's very difficult rye. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's gluey, <laughs> it's, yeah, pain in the ass. Uh, so we commissioned them. So um, every, here's the thing, every drop of Canadian Club whiskey sold around the world is manufactured, produced, and aged in Walkerville, except for the 100% rye. Right. They produce it for us, and then they ship it to us, and we bottle it in Walkerville. So yeah. that's a tasty one as well. Oh yeah. So with the age statement ones coming out, yeah, of course, yeah. um, with the age statement like your 43s and that sort of thing, in 2020, what uh, what sort of advances? What's, what's what's the plan for 2020 for Canadian Club? What's the plan for 2020? Plan for 2020, we have a new one coming out. Do you remember the barley batch we released two years ago? We're going to do that with a little twist on it. It's going to be barley and rye batch. Um, so instead of, you know, the, the barley was something really unique and different. A sipper. I called it a sipper. Uh, lots of oats and cereal because of all that barley. And the rye really just rounds everything out perfectly. So that's coming on uh, Father's Day. Uh, we're going to continue with the CC Over Beer. That's been a fantastic campaign for us here in Canada. Australia's been doing it for 10 years. Yeah. Blowing it out of the water over there. So... Uh, we're having success with that, and it's fun. And the younger consumers are having fun with it, so that's great. And then, of course, we're going to release the CC 40, uh, 43 year. That's insane. Yes, yes. It's just mental. Like, and thank you, Bob, because I think the 40, 42 comes in at. Uh, three, three, um, which is very, very three oh nine. Which is, yes, it's cheap. It's cheap <laughs> for that exactly. Yeah, we do, we're not doing. I mean, we did a big hike. Forty came in at two fifty. Yeah. The uh, forty one, uh, forty one came in at um, two ninety nine. 42 year came in at 309 and this one's 43 is going to come in at 319. So, so and we're doing 829 liter cases. Okay. Um, mostly for Canada. Some, just like the 40 and uh, 41 and 42, a little bit goes into the key markets in the US. And as a brand ambassador, how much longer how much longer do you think you've got on the road? Because when you, like you said, like it, was it 32 years? 23 years? 32 years. 32, yeah. Obviously, it's going to be ridiculously difficult to replace you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, for you, like, what's your what's your timeline for life as the Canadian Club brand ambassador? You know, here's the thing: everybody's replaceable. <laughs> Learn that lesson. Um, How is everything tasty? Very good, thank good. you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, my, I have a plan in place. I'd like to get to, uh, you know, release these next three, 43, 44, 45. They're your babies. Those are my babies, yeah. Um, and then I'd like to, you know, I'd like to kind of pull back. I'll, I would have had, at that point, uh, 35 years. And um, But, you know, I could go back, and, and on Monday morning, they call me and say, we got a different plan. <laughs> and thanks for everything, Tish. Ciao. <laughs> I don't know. That would be detrimental to the brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to think so, so. Um, and I, I'm not done yet. I'm not done. I still, I still want to. So every day, like even though after all these years and all the changes and like what four or five owners and rotations and all this stuff, you still wake up every day and you just want us to preach the oh, love 100%. of Canadian Club. One hundred percent. You don't get that very often. No, I don't think in any industry. I know, and 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 very very. Um, protective. I get like I get I get insulted a little bit too quickly because uh, I just expect everybody to love it as much as I do. And it, you know it's understandable you can't talk to somebody that's like a hardcore bourbon drinker and come down to a, a, a really light yeah. but like as you said earlier the, the classic twelve that's that's a world favorite. Yeah. I released that uh, when I was over in New Zealand uh, and uh, I, there's no looking back. Once that once that hits the shelf. And like cherry and wine 
design and like the the, the finishes. Mm-hmm. It just it just loves it. It just lives by it. And I think well, you've been through the whole change. Like everybody geeks out about single malts. The single malts weren't popular in North America until nineteen the mid nineteen eighties. Yes. Yeah. Before there was blends. Yes, I know. You know? And I, I, a friend of mine and I, uh, we chat about like the romance of old bourbons and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, but the bourbon rules weren't around until the, the mid '60s. That's right. Before that, right. bourbon wasn't great. Like That's right. bourbon whiskey wasn't being made great. It was just what it was. That's right. Yeah. You know, a bunch yeah. of lobbyists wanted to push corn, and a bunch of lobbyists wanted to push American oak, and there you go, you got bourbon. That's right. Like, That's right. That's exactly. So it. Yeah. You go to these old bars like Canon. Canon has that massive collection in Seattle of vintage stuff. I'm like, oh, 1895 rye. I'm like, do you really want to taste that? Do you really want to taste 1895 rye? Because it wasn't good. <laughs> I can't imagine that. But I, I do imagine. find that Canadian whiskey, old bottles of Canadian whiskey always still taste very similar to what they taste now. Yes, like, there's yes, still yes. all rules to them then. Yes, yeah. There, there, is, there is. And um, over the years, you know, between the owners um, uh, of, of CC, uh, they, they made a couple of mistakes. And, you know, I, I was there to see, you know, all of a sudden, what the hell did they do to this batch that doesn't taste, you know. So they were, whatever, I'm not naming names, but... <laughs> They learn from their mistakes. And the thing is, you know, if you and I, Sean, put like a billion dollars together and we wanted to make our own Canadian spirit, we could put invest a million dollars into the best distillate up front. We put it into the wrong aging vessel. Boom. We lost all our money. So everything, when you think about it, a lot of people think that, okay, this is what I'm going to use. The best of everything. This is what I'm going to make my distillate with. And it's okay. I, I, the barrel, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's that's where, you know, this is... And that's another thing that I like talking about. You know, it's not just the production, how the brand's made. Talk about the importance of certain things that have, what has to be, has to be, has to be. And that's how you come up with this award-winning spirit. I want to do a... I've uh, been wanting to do a seminar for a little while because I work with a lot of craft distilleries here in D.C. Yeah. I want to do a seminar purely on demystifying the romance of the expert barrel uh-huh. because I find a lot of the craft distilleries here they buy all these expert bourbon barrels and they buy them one at a time so the broker is not exactly like they buy one or two at a time because they're only making a small little oh, okay. okay. and so you know that the broker is not giving you the best stuff when you're only buying two barrels no, at a time to no. ship from Louisville and so I, I've had a good chat with a couple of them I'm like so like what have you and it's like well you start seeing like multiple strips of paint and different stencils <laughs> and you know like oh it's an ex Woodford Reserve barrel but that Woodford Reserve barrel got sent to this place and this place and oh. this place and got filled it's like a seven day old tea bag by the time you get it that's right I'm like, and everybody just romances the ex-bourbon barrel so much I'm like yeah, unless you have a good broker who actually uh-huh. is giving you a once filled bourbon barrel you might be getting like an old tea bag <laughs> and people are like yeah I can see that I'm like we've got to get a Cooper back here in Canada because we don't have one and is so, there any such thing out here? not on the west coast we had a Cooper until uh, 2010 I think and uh, he still is in the open and he still make, he makes barrels, but he do, he sort of does barrels for swapping for whiskey. Oh, so like he, okay. he's retired, and he just like I know that a couple of uh, distillers um, shrunk down some American bourbon barrels and recouped them yeah. to be a smaller barrel to get some more surface area. Okay, okay. Um, but we're getting some great whiskey. Obviously, with the whiskey awards the other night, there was a lot of BC distilleries that got a lot. Oh, of good. So, right. did you enjoy the? Did you go to the awards the other night? I couldn't. This is the first time I haven't done it in years. Really? Yes, yes. I I had a, made a prior commitment and I couldn't get out of it. Uh, and I, but I'll, I believe you, I was here in spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh God. But we did send, uh, we have Patrick Sweeney out here from our Toronto office. Oh, lovely. And so, and of course the BC team attended. So, yeah, 42 got some nice, some nice awards. Some nice awards. Yes. Well, thanks very much for staying down with me. I'm going to oh, let you welcome. enjoy lunch and do my rotation of speakers today. <laughs> <laughs> let me know when I need to move. I can move right over oh, there. Oh, was perfect. <laughs> so who's coming up next? James Neal. Oh, yeah, James. Yeah. I think he's coming up. I want to sit down with um, Jeff as well, because mm-hmm. like, Jeff and I are good friends from way back. But Jeff's from out here, right? Uh, Calgary. Oh, Calgary. Okay. So he was the Florida Canyon brand ambassador uh, based out of Claret yeah. in years. Like, I first met years. him. I think it was out here. Yeah. yeah. He's an awesome guy. But thank yeah. you very much for sitting down with me. Oh, you're welcome, honey. You're welcome. Thanks, Boo Shifters. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, if you're listening, whatever platform you're on, give me a good rating, subscribe, listen along. Uh, I'm going to keep going. I really enjoy sitting down with people and learning where they're from, what they did, and how they got to where they were. So if you love it, give me a good five stars. If you don't, give me one and I'll try harder. <laughs>